Welcome to Lori G. Ashley Airbrush Makeup. We're going to show you how to airbrush Lori G. Ashley Makeup. There are different types of airbrush machines. This one that comes with your little, you get your little airbrush guns. For Lori G. Ashley Airbrush Makeup, we use usually an 0.5 millimeter airbrush gun for the purpose of getting your minerals out. There's other ones called Vogue, which is what I use. But like I said, as long as it has a stylus cup, and I prefer the 0.5 uh, millimeter airbrush stylus cup guns, and I also prefer, if I can get it all, that they have a lid. And I'll get to that when we get to mixing here. Now, I'd like y'all to meet Sean. Sean is one of our valued employees and doing a video with us today. So, to start off with, Sean, if you'd like to grab the makeup, we have kits that we recommend new to Lori G. Ashley Airbrush Makeup people to buy. All the colors are designed for mix to match. A couple of them, M1 and M2, often match people. But for people who use Luminous, if you're using Luminous um, 1, 2, and 3, oftentimes you'll have to mix L1, L2, M1 to get your shade. And we have some samples and guides how to do this as well as colors in the back. Black can be used as eyeliner, which we also sell the black mineral powder that I like to dip my eyeliner liquid into the black liner liquid, dip it into the powder, tap it off, and we'll, you'll see as we go. But we have thinner and setting spray. I normally don't sell thinner because thinner is cheap. This is water-based makeup. You can thin it with water. Um, so. You also have your Reef Red Coral Dream Posh Pink Blush Colors, and those are used as blushes as well as mixing to reach your shade, especially if you have a darker skin tone. Um, you may need to use tan, Reef Red or Coral Dream, and black, um, or dark brown, Coral Dream, and black, or Reef Red, dark brown and black, or brown, usually in one, one part of each color. But anyway, today I'm going to show you how to do Sean's skin tone. And you have to mix to reach your match. So with Sean's skin tone, first I'm going to start off with, and I'm going to see which one closest. That's M1. It's too light. I'm going with M2. It's too dark. So Sean is more than likely going to be a mix of M1 and M2. You need to shake your colors up for two minutes. And the purpose of that is to make sure all your minerals are evenly mixed in here. And with our technology, you do not need beads in the bottom of your bottle. When you see it's clear at the bottom, you've got it mixed. It's not quite mixed enough because it's not floating. Sometimes it'll stick when you first get them new. Shake it up a minute and just kind of pinch right here at the bottom. Shake it up some more to get those minerals free-flowing again on the bottom of your colors. <laughs> You want to shake that while I do this? Thank you, ma'am. Take your stylus cup off. Take the stylus cup lid off your stylus cup. <laughs> and since the closest color to her skin is M2, I'm going to put about five drops of M2. And then I'm going to grab about three drops of M1. Place your stylus cut lid back on. Put your finger over the bottom. Press your power button back to get it to mix up, to make those colors even. To test the colors, take the wrist Spray. And that seems still a little bit too dark, don't you think? Well, when it dries, it'll be a little bit better, too. Right. Well, I'm going to take a drop of L2. L2 is more of a yellow base, and it's usually for neutralizing colors. L1 has a pink tone to it. L2 is a neutral color. She doesn't need a lot of pink into her skin tone color mix that I just did. So I'm going to add a couple of drops. Oops. 
to get that a little bit more neutral, but just lighten it up a bit. Back mix it again. Test one more time. Still too dark? Yeah, just a little bit. Let me add a few more drops. Check that rag right. and wipe that off real quick. Let's see how this color goes. Much better. That's better. All right, and there we go. So we have Sean's color. Okay, I'm going to ask Sean to pull her hair back out of her face. And the art of airbrushing. Harder for me to do somebody else's face. All right, I'm gonna need a few more colors. Here we go. But I remember this. Bear with me. Give me your wrist again so I can check it. Easier when I do myself. Can't see it. And the reason why that lid is, you see that just pop out? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your lid. <laughs> That's why I don't like airbrush guns that don't have a. Okay. Get your neck area. Girl, <laughs> it's so hard to do something else. I'm not that kind of makeup artist. Okay, you have air that's still in your gun. Me personally, I like taking a blow dryer to dry it a lot quicker because I'm an impatient woman. I don't want to sit for a minute. A lot of times you see makeup artists spray their models, walk away for a couple of minutes and come back and spray them again. I'm not that kind. Sean has beautiful skin, not a lot of coverage. This is what I call light coverage. She only required one spray. The next step, for the purpose of doing this video, we're only going to spray her with one coat. We're going to open up our silica finishing powder. This is water-based makeup. You want to open it so they can see it? This is water-based makeup. So it's not waterproof, but with my makeup, it is water res uh, no, it is sweat resistant excuse me so the sweat resistance it comes in a five gram sifter jar take this lid off dump it into a container that's larger and um you have to take the whole sifter how to listen okay now, can you get that out there we go there we go dump it into a larger container that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Take a kabuki brush, dip it down in there. By the way, silica is white. If you've ever heard of Sephora's HD Forever Finishing Powder, that's what this is. Take it. Your face is still feeling kind of damp. Mm -hmm. Some people it will absorb. Here in the south, we have a lot of humidity, so our skin's moist. Whereas up north, it may dry really quick. Dab it. And once down, if you want to swirl it on there, I'll let you swirl and you can feel. I can't. <laughs> swirl it. Get up on your forehead. To set it, it gives you a high definition. And it sets it. So it will stay on for hours. I've tested my makeup many times. I wear it all the time. And uh, the longest we tested for where we, um, for it not coming off was three days. So the silica actually sets it and helps 
sweat proof your makeup. If one coat is not enough makeup for your liking, then I suggest after you've set it this time, go back and spray another spray until you get the coverage. One spray is light coverage, two sprays is medium coverage, three sprays is heavy coverage. The next thing, I'm, I'm going to go grab something real quick. If you want to go ahead and open up the black, this is the eyeliner, and open up the black liquid. Pop that little cap out of there. Take one of these little eye, eye, um, eyeliner. This is this has an eyeliner brush on one side and a mascara brush on the other side. Girl, I can't get it out of the plastic. Okay. okay. But after you shoot the black up, open up your your um your black eyeliner. Are we taking the sifter? Out? Yeah. yeah, I always take the sifters out. I put the sifters in there to keep the powder all compressed. And together, but we're not dumping this one. So what you're going to do, and if you want to dip that in that liquid and tap it very softly to get that liquid from blood free flowing. Do you ever draw on eyeliner or no? Me no. Okay, well then let me try and do your eyes. But uh, I take that liquid. You can use water, by the way, but I just like taking this liquid. And I like minerals, as much minerals as possible. I don't like waxes, paraffins, and things that are going to uh, clog my pores. And then, close your eyes. Girl, I'm not good at drawing somebody else's eyes. I could draw mine. Oh, Lord. But as you see, it draws on. <laughs> Can you see your eye? I've made a mess, but it draws <laughs> on and it will dry. And it will dry naturally. There you go, girl. You have to wash your face off after this because I can't draw somebody else's eye with eyeliner. But this is how I do the um, Lori G. Ashley um, mineral eyeliner. I'm not into spraying. I'm not that great of an artist. I don't have time for all that. Now then, um, we also have the setting spray which is what I'm going to blow on top of all this stuff here to make sure it's got a set. Skin feels so soft. Does it? Good. Yes. The thing about my um, setting spray is the only makeup I have that has any form of alcohol is the Lori G. Ashley setting spray. And that's because I want to make sure everything is set. But my skin can still breathe. And it only takes a couple of drops. Because I just sprayed it with the that should be enough. There we go. Oops, how'd that go black? I got black on your face, girl, with the <laughs> eyeliner. <laughs> but you see, the makeup's not rubbing off, but I took that black off. <laughs> That's what silica powder does. And then I just set it with this. And within about 10 minutes tops, oh, everything should be it. Now, look at your eyeliner. See, I, I just uh, put too much eyeliner on your eye. I got it too high. Okay. There we go. But I'll let you do I'm not good at drawing somebody else's eyes. <laughs> but we also want to introduce, I'll let you paint on your lips. You can see it looks really dark. It does not go on as dark as this looks. It looks really red, raspberry. But here's the surprise to the lipstick that we just came up with. I'm going to let Sean paint it on her lips, and you're going to see it's not a shocking bright color as it looks. It goes on really soft, warm, and pretty without being bright and shocking. And it's moisturizing as well. How does it feel? Mm -hmm. It's very, very moist. So we gave you a little bit of color. Like I said, here's, look at, put the lipstick up to her lips and you'll see the difference in what it looks like on the lips. As to the color, there's a big difference, isn't it? Yeah, it's, just a, it's, it's a lot lighter. It sure is. Yep. So, that's it another technique good. we have. We're not wanting shock. We're wanting beauty with moisture. But, uh, so when you look at the color, don't be shocked. It's not as bright as it looks. It's really not. I'm not a red person. <laughs> right. The other thing we're coming out with is a hyaluronic acid um, skin plumper. People um, don't understand. When you get a filler and they shoot that hyaluronic acid in your face which is what it is, um, 
it's going to be there probably a year or so. Hyaluronic acid cannot penetrate more than one layer of skin. I don't care who you're buying it from. Hyaluronic acid used every day, two or three times a day, will make a huge difference in your skin plumpiness and um, diminish the depthness of, of wrinkles using it, like I said, constantly, every day, two to three times a day. But um, for me, um, the other thing about this is um, any hyaluronic acid you use, since it only goes one layer skin deep without being injected as a filler, um, will plump your face. We've already done Sean's face before. She used to have 11s, they're gone. <laughs> or at least radically diminished. Um, and so the idea of hyaluronic acid, no matter who you're buying it from, unless they've got something else in there to, to add to it to last, you know, maybe six to eight hours. They do have those out there, kind of pricey. Just use hyaluronic acid every day, twice a day, um, for at least 30 days, and you'll see a major difference in your skin. It um, does plump your skin. Um, but it's not a miracle worker. It's just a plumper. Gives it a more fresher look. So anyway, this is Lori G. Ashley Airbrush Makeup and how we use it. Thank you.